Hey guys, Clumsy here and welcome back to ETS2. I am back from China and it's time to take a look at the new truck from XBS, the DAF 95. Beautiful classic truck right in my era. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting old. Anyway, let's go and hear the engine. I think what they said is the sound is coming from the default DAF. You guys let me know, okay? From inside, this is how the truck looks. It's beautiful, beautiful model. Actually it reminds me of like a when I see the truck, it reminds me of like a an old school Gundam. You know the the first Gundam series. Kind of is like that. Gives that feel, gives that vibe. Even inside. I don't know, there's like a hmm a certain Japanese appeal to it. Maybe because of the material. And of course, Ghostbusters, 90s, perfectly so. Lights are working. I think uh, the the switches are a bit of a hybrid with the mods that I have enabled. But anyway, they sound good, they sound nice. And the engine doesn't sound half bad. And uh, you might be wondering, why the heck do we have this kind of color? Um, it'll all make sense in a while, but we'll have to travel first, 56 kilometers. We are currently in Prague, and you might have an idea already of where we are going and what we're going to do in this episode. Maybe based on the title, on the thumbnail, but as of this moment, still a bit sneaky. But we'll see, we'll see. So we are currently in the default map, no pro mods unfortunately. No pro mods, no map mods. And that might already give a hint of why, of what we're doing. I do have uh, real traffic density, real AI sounds and all that stuff. So at the very least we should have pretty realistic traffic and AI traffic behavior. Even if we don't have the luxury of pro mods. I also have uh, Project Next Gen 1.6. So the texture shouldn't be half bad. Should actually be pretty awesome. Boop, 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 boop. Engine brake sounds very subtle. Very subtle. I did see that there was actually a... Uh, um, an open pipe sound, I think, a mod for this already. Someone adopted the, someone adapted the the uh, Cummins N14 sounds from Krishbom. I think those are originally from ATS, and they adapted it to this one. And they said, I think it's quite realistic, because in reality, the DAF 95 actually had Cummins N14 engines. At one point, from what Alex and Rob are telling me over at Discord, it's like uh, since 94, 1995, something along those lines. This truck had that option for getting the Cummins N14. So that is not too far off from reality. Although Rob did mention that it is not pretty accurate in terms of the sound. Somehow he said it sounds very American. Uh, the sound of the N14 and maybe even if it's the same engine maybe it sounds different I don't know I don't really know but you guys uh, let me know in the comments okay would you be okay with sticking with this engine sound or would you like a more raw sounding thing like the Cummins N14 from Krishbom because this is very this is very stock I would say and it, I'm, I'm not opposed to it it's actually pretty nice but it's not booming, you know. It really depends on which you guys prefer. It does drive very nice though. And the interior, the the modeling is beautiful. Goodness. Yeah, it really reminds me of uh, 90s era. Old school trucking with the dials and everything. 
distance here in the retard orbit. Yeah, I'm really slowing down very fast because I don't have a trailer on me. Actually, not very used to it. Although the, the, the company names are a bit different, I'm wondering if I have any mod enabled for them. Maybe I do, maybe I just forgot about them. I do have Momo's Air Ride A3 mod enabled, so you can uh, feel a bit more bounciness inside the cab. And I think I like that kind of uh, realism put in. Although I'm not sure, to be honest, if this truck already has that kind of suspension, but I, I guess so. Has that pretty comfy seat? Maybe I don't know. Not sure when that was developed, but I defer to you guys. You guys are more often the experts here. Okay, can I go? Yes, thank you. All right, let's go and exit here. No car. No car. Right. I'm trying to hear the engine. It feels a bit weird. When I let go, I hear that loud sound, but when I step on the throttle, yeah, hear it? It's a bit weird. It's a bit weird that the when I lift my foot off the pedal, the sounds are actually louder. Oh, bit too fast there. Steady. There you go. So yeah, you guys let me know if you want to. Uh, maybe next episode I'll try it out. So we can get a glimpse of both engine sounds. The default, this one. And the ones from adop adopted from Krishpom. There we go. There's our trailer. So I'm a bit behind because as you might guys might know, I was uh, out in China last week. And uh, this event came out exactly as I was about to leave. <laughs> so <laughs> I haven't had a chance of doing a single job. But now we're here and I'm going to catch up and this is why I have this paint job. See how matchy matchy that looks. Not 100% but close enough in my books. I think we're lacking a bit more blue in there. Fault in. There we go. Fault is 5 reference. Cables are working. Beautiful. Yeah, that doesn't look half bad. Yeah, a bit more blue could have been made could have done it perfectly but I mean look at the model on this trailer right I didn't know there were so many different kinds I only saw one like the it looked like a box trailer but it had the truck at the other end at the back didn't know you had these kinds of trailers or maybe it changes because I heard that the destinations change every now and then so for us we are headed from Prague to Poznan it's going to be 360 kilometer journey so we might as well get started. Only thing is, the game crashed. Just like that. OMG. <laughs> Welcome back from China. So you guys keep me company. I'll just reload it. I don't know what the heck happened, but I'm hoping that our progress wasn't lost. Usually there's an autosave when you uh, attach or uh, when you take the job, but we'll see where we get to. I'm not sure if I'll have to restart this. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm also using a different profile. The original profile, the one with the Scania T, that's this one. This one is a different one because I didn't want to tinker with that original profile, that main one. Because it had pro mods still active in there and I didn't want to remove all the map mods. So let's stick with this. I am not sure what caused the crash. The game didn't even detect that there was such a thing. But we'll see where we ended up with. And maybe we don't pause the game anymore once we get back. Okay. World of Trucks job in progress. Now where could we be? I hope we, I hope it can like restore because it's a World of Trucks contract. Okay, we're here. Okay, right before coupling. Perfect. Okay, good, good, good. Right. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good uh, saving mechanism there. Let's make sure we attach properly here though. Yeah, that looks like 
soundtrack. Perfect. Parking brake. Go down and lift those legs. Connect the cables and we are good to go. Alright. Let's get going before this game crashes again. Alright. Now I can feel the weight. 18 tons. Not so heavy. It's a 400 horsepower engine we have. Torque isn't bad at all. My goodness, that trailer looks wonderful. It's a privilege to be hauling these guys. When is the actual race? Do you guys know? I have no clue about the, the event. I've never seen one of these in real life. I do like the sounds of the indicators though. They look, they sound properly old school. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm focusing on the sounds more, the ASMR ish vibe is real. The engine sound itself does not give me so much of an engine of an ASMR vibe, but it's not bad. I mean, in general, XBSS40 is the modeling. You can see the interior, the exterior. Everything looks beautiful and then everything looks super optimized. And the engine sounds, I'm not sure really where he gets them from. If he reuses some from SES, or if he makes his own, I'm not really sure. But usually, because of the beauty of his trucks, Krishboom or the other prominent sound modders become uh, interested in creating some sound mods for the truck anyway. So, you get the best of both worlds, of all worlds. Very nice looking Scania truck there. <laughs> First time I saw that paint job. I think that's thanks to uh, SIP's uh, real traffic density. It also introduces some additional AI colors. Some more, uh, let's say, creative colors. Anyway, maybe I can tell you some stories of uh, my trip to China while we're at it. So in case you guys didn't know, I uh, went to Guangzhou last week. GZ. And it was a very busy experience. You might have noticed I was replying less to you. I was not as active. And uh, yeah, there were no streams because I was out. But uh, squeeze in. Oh, sorry, this guy maybe. Thank you. And it was a pretty busy week, super busy with work. Um, but it was a fun trip. And uh, it was my first time traveling since I got into aviation, since I my interest in aviation bloomed. Uh, you might have seen a couple of X-Plane videos, right, coming out, streams, videos. It's not getting much traction yet, hopefully it will soon. Not yet, but I'm still really into aviation and I've been like reading up, watching different videos. So I've really been uh, enjoying, um, well, watching and uh, flying. So when it was time to fly in real life, I was so excited and I, I got like a, a window seat got myself a seat that goes like gets a perfect view of the wing is that a plane oh look at that how timely maybe that deserves a shot huh that deserves a screenshot right there let's go and take one let me position myself how timely is that man there's also something happening on the opposite side i'm not sure what that is okay let, let's see if we can get the look of the plane oh that is perfect yeah, what plane is that, guys? If anyone knows, comment. Four engines, looks like. Massive plane, by the looks of it. Okay. Let me see. Actually, that looks perfect right there. Oh, yeah. Let's get that. Let's also get one from the other side because there seemed to be like an interesting event happening there. Oh yeah, some kind of uh, spillage. What is that? Not only spillage, it looked like something blew up. Wow. 
and it looked like the truck actually flew off right there. Oh, that sounds scary. That looks scary. Okay, let's take a photo. Yeah, not too shabby, eh? Not too shabby. Let's do it like so. Bit of a dramatic angle. Yeah, works for me. Good. So yeah, I was really excited to fly. And I was really excited to see how the pros did it. How the pros managed. How the real pilots flew a plane. When they lifted their gears. When they uh, extended their flaps. When they used their speed brakes. You know, best practices. And I, I was so happy to just be a part of it. So I was like... The moment I arrived at the airport, well, I was waiting for boarding, I was plane spotting, watching planes land, or, uh, land, take off, taxi, all that stuff. It was super exciting. It was, I think, the, the most enjoyable flight I had for the sake of the flight itself, and not because of the destination, not because of the movies, not because of the company. So the, for the flight itself, you know, I get to enjoy it. It's nice being able to appreciate these things so yeah anyway so it was like a, a four hour trip to Guangzhou from Singapore where I'm living and uh, it was a very smooth flight nice, nice weather we were cruising at uh, 39,000 feet which is an amazing thing to me as well because I mean like the planes that I fly and explain right now can only go up to 16,000 so 39,000 that's more than double that's amazing. Hopefully I get to fly one of those real soon. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, it was a pretty smooth flight. I arrived in Guangzhou. I stayed in a nice hotel. Uh, and uh, got to work. And I was, I was lucky actually. Because uh, my team was there. Everyone was Chinese. Well, there were like two folks from Singapore. But they were also Chinese in descent, so they knew how to speak. So they were all, like we were, we were um, at work, we were all in one room, like one conference room. And everyone, literally everyone, was, was speaking in Mandarin. Except for me, of course. So I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, at least I knew when someone spoke English suddenly, then that means they were talking to me. Or they wanted me to hear it. So it was a bit uh, like, uh, I wish I knew how to speak Mandarin. But yeah, that's, that's the challenge. Okay, crossing over from Czech to Poland. That was quick. Actually, why is this place, why does this place look new to me? I'm not sure if I've gone through this road before. Or maybe it's because of the next-gen textures that everything looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks like actually a new place, a new area. Like one of the DLC areas. Stick to 50 here because there seems to be a very, very sharp hairpin coming. There it is. Something for racing. But not for me. Not for this truck. Not for this driver, I think. So let's slow down. And get some retarder action going. Max retarder. Yeah, max retarder is more than enough. Perfect. Shoo. Thank goodness for it, Arders. All right. Yeah. So everyone was speaking in Chinese, and uh, I was a bit uh, left out. But <laughs> that's how it is. When you don't speak Chinese, then you you don't understand a thing, and uh, it's a bit of a a stretch to make them speak English just for me, unless they were speaking to me directly. So yeah, I had to live with it. But that's fine. But yeah, it was very busy. Very productive though. Very tiring. Very exhausting. But uh, they, uh, we, we, we kind of like the... Not really... Well, in a way, we kind of like worked hard, partied hard. In a way. Because we like we the usual office hours. Like 9 to 6, 9 to 7. We were working like, always at 100%. And then afterwards, we would go out for dinner or uh, go out for drinks, things like that. So it was pretty fun. And they made me eat so many different kinds of food. And you can probably imagine it. Like, you, 
prob- you've probably heard some stories before the different kinds of food you can have in China and it's a bit uh, not, so not a bit it's really interesting and of course because I was basically uh, effectively working with locals so they knew what to feed me basically and uh, I can actually share a bit of the photos in Discord, maybe in, in inter- Instagram. I'm not sure if I've shared it. I, I did share a couple of things over at my IG page. You can go and take a look at it. Go to Instagram and then uh, look for, I think, The Clumsy Geek is my username. If it's not that one, The Clumsy Geek Gaming. You know, I, I can never remember which is which. You let me pass. I think it's time for us to go because that guy stopped already. Or maybe not. Uh, there we go. There's just a bit of buffer in there. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, actually the truck doesn't sound bad. Very nice humming. Maybe it's perfect for stock sounds, huh? What is that truck? Is that like a Russian truck? Clumsy trucker. So they made me eat uh, very interesting dishes. It's, uh, dishes that are filled with chili. I think they call it mala. Uh, some other, so many different combinations and some very exotic animal parts all the innards you can think of basically <laughs> but the most uh, hardcore thing i ate was a pork brain yes you're me right that's brain as in the one for thinking and it really looks literally as how you can imagine it you know how a brain looks like it looks exactly like that and um, so raw we, we saw it raw because it was the type of like a hot pot kind of restaurant where you cook the things yourself so the the slow down slow down slow down retarder engine brake everything the mix thank you So yeah, it was a bit uh, scary because they, 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 they give you the stuff raw so you see it in all its pure glory, right? And it look, really looks like a brain, like how you imagine it exactly. And then you kind of uh, uh, grab a bit of it and then dip it in the, 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 the soup because that's where you cook it. You leave it there for a couple of minutes and then uh, it, it disappears for a while because it goes under the soup and then you kind of hope that it disappears and it disappears into nothingness so you don't have to eat it anymore but um, it doesn't it resurfaces after a while <laughs> so, um, and I, kind of, I was kind of hoping that it looks different by the time it resurfaces that doesn't look like a brain anymore but it still looks like brain. It's just not as pink. It's more brown. <laughs> you know, when you cook something, it becomes brownish. So, yeah, it, it still looks like brain though. Uh, so I had to eat that. Well, they didn't really force me, but you know, I wanted to be game. I wanted to try it out myself. I wanted to um, have the uh, opportunity of saying, like, I've, I've tried pork brain. And they said it would make me smarter. <laughs> for sure I needed that with all the work that we needed to do but uh, it was not that bad actually it was not as bad it did not taste as bad as it looked it actually tasted pretty okay like it was not we have this Filipino dish where we have uh, like uh, part of it is like I don't know if it's chicken or pork liver and that liver had a terrible aftertaste for me. I hated the thing. It was, I think, the most hated food for me because of the aftertaste. The brain, the consistency was like tofu. 
and it was not actually bad. There was minimal aftertaste, so I could. It's just like eating tofu, a bit mushier tofu. And the fact that if you imagine what you're eating, then it might make you gag. But <laughs> no, but the taste itself is not bad. It's just the connotation, the the idea of what you're eating is what makes it a bit scary. But yeah, taste-wise, not really bad at all. I didn't have too much though because uh, there might be some side effects afterwards. So, <laughs> yeah, so they, they made me eat that and after that I was like... And, and they made me eat that our first night there. So afterwards I was very brave to try anything else. And uh, yeah, they, they, they... What other things did they make me eat? Well apparently they, they eat like bullfrogs. Yeah, frogs. And it actually tastes very good. It's like a, um, a mix between chicken and fish. It's like, it tastes like chicken, but the, uh, the bones are like more like fish-like. So a, a little bit of hybrid between the two. That's how like, a frog tastes like, apparently. And uh, they actually eat it. Like, the, the pork brain, I think I was the only one who ate it, so it's probably their trap for foreigners. So it's that thing that you feed foreigners, so you uh, give them the complete experience, but they don't really eat it yourself so much, something like that. That's how the brain is. But the, the, the frog, I think, is like a normal dish for them. And it's actually pretty good because it's not just literally a frog. You cannot really see. You cannot even... If, if they didn't tell me, I wouldn't know because it looks like chicken. You know, it's not like the whole frog facing you or looking at you. It's just like bits and parts of it you don't really realize. Look. Triple wiper hype. Yeah, classic daft there. Slow down a bit here. But yes, the experience, the food experience was definitely something because it's, it was my third time in Guangzhou but uh, it was my first time eating those very exotic food because before it was like more like an international uh, group that I was with so maybe it was a bit more, maybe we didn't have like locals to tour us or uh, not, as, uh, not as hardcore locals maybe but this time it was everybody was like could say pure Chinese in a way so it was a more authentic experience I do like the raindrops though the rain physics beautiful oh. and because we are in we are basically in an SES default map the performance isn't bad either very nice okay yeah so yeah, I had to eat a couple of different interesting things, but it was not all exotic. Some of them were familiar, and uh, they were all tasty though. They were all tasty. They were all so good, and they were surprisingly very healthy. Like it was nothing. Like they they are so. How do you say? That night, that first night when we had the the, the hot pot kind of thing, where you cook stuff in the soup. There were so many different layers in the in the food. Like uh, you had this like herbal tea, fruit, this tea with the fruits, not only tea leaves but actual like I don't know berries or some whatever you call them. So they tasted very different from the normal tea that I'm used to. And they are very. They had like uh, sesame oil apparently. So. You kind of make a dipping sauce for yourself. You mix soy sauce, vinegar, garlic, uh, what's the green thing? Um, I don't know what that is. Parsley maybe. Parsley or Chinese parsley. Probably Chinese parsley. Cilantro. Coriander, however you call it. So you mix those and you mix them with sesame oil. And apparently they, they taught me that the sesame oil is the trick because the soup itself is super spicy. You can, it's literally red. And it's filled with chilies. So if you just eat that, after a while, your whole face will be numb. The, the spiciness is different from like the Thai spiciness or the wasabi spiciness. It's it's like a, a numbing kind of spice. 
So it's not, it doesn't really like make you want to drink milk or uh, drink water, which is a bad thing when you're trying to counter spice. But um, it's something that will make your mouth literally numb. So it has that effect. And they say that the sesame oil is actually a thing to counteract. So that the chili oil is counteracted by the sesame oil. So that's why you put a lot of sesame oil in the, the dip, in your dip. And it makes things more tolerable. You can eat more with it so you don't get numb as quickly. So those kinds of things. And then they had this like uh, gelatin. Not sure if gelatin is like a common thing for all for other countries also, but it's like this jelly jelly thing, and it's a okay. I think I'll have to stay on this lane because that other one is a bit cramped, and we'll just uh, stay on the outer lane and uh, make our way around. There we go. We're a truck. We can be excused for this behavior. And then they had this, yeah, this like gelatin with uh, milk, so it's like a dessert, but it's actually served together with the other food because the idea is when the when things get too spicy, so even with the sesame oil, uh, the numbness will eventually creep up on you, and depending on your tolerance, then you might need to something to like balance it out again even more. So that's where the gelatin and milk comes in. So you kind of eat a little bit of that dessert as you eat the main dish. So it's not like, oh, the, the main food first and then the dessert comes after. It's like everything together and then you kind of balance it out. So you, you stay in the game longer, basically. And then you kind of cook stuff. So some of the stuff were pretty normal, like, I don't know, pork, beef, chicken, you own mostly pork and beef, different parts. And then the innards came like uh, stomach, I don't know, intestines maybe, one of those things. I not, was not exactly sure what they were, but they were very different. And then yeah, the finale was like the brain. They really was like, they were really like, I'm excited to make me try it. I think I have rec a recording of it somewhere. Maybe they'll use that to blackmail me at some point, but <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was a fun experience, so I'm, really happy for it and I, I think I'm thankful for them for uh, touring me around to make me try these things very nice rain particles from the truck in front of us that is from foggy weather that looks so real yeah perfect slow down a bit another roundabout of course why not? Trying to look at the indicators in the truck. They're actually pretty complete. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did that guy stop? I would have stopped for him. I guess he was scared with what I could do. bit low there we go even the shifter is very nice looking that one I only wish it uh, moved but I think it's part of the limitation of the game it cannot detect or maybe there is no linkage between which gear you're in and the animation it could play I've never seen a truck actually have a shiftable or a moving gear not sure if it works I think it's a limitation on the engine Anyway, so what else? Uh, aside from eating, working, <laughs> um, ah, yeah, it was a bit, it was fortunate really, because um, initially, in my project, I was the only one getting sent to China. I had the lucky draw of going to China, so initially I thought I was going to be alone in there, but apparently, as as the days grew closer. We figured out as we were talking, like uh, in our team calls and stuff. Apparently, so many of us were going to Guangzhou, and it was not for the same project. So there were like I don't know, three or four different projects happening at the same time, and everyone was going there. So it it shows you the the amount of activity 
that is happening in China and, uh, and in Asia in particular. So yeah, emerging markets and everything. So lots of things are happening and lots of people are getting sent there. And it just so happened that that same week, there were like two or three other projects with lots of people I know and worked with before also being there. So it was very cool because we got to like hang out and uh, reconnect and we, we didn't think we would like meet each other because we were like assigned to different projects, assigned to different teams already, stuff like that. So it was a pretty cool experience and we got to hang out, we got to have beers and uh, unwind after a hard day's work. So it's all pretty cool. Yeah. But then, yeah, the, the, the week just flew by, actually. It, it was like both long and short at the same time. I, can, I cannot quite explain it. Like the, how do you say? The days go by so quickly, but they also seem to go so slowly because so many things happen. It's like you can't wait for it to finish, but at the same time, you don't want it to finish. Or maybe I do, but <laughs> it's... It's uh, It was enjoyable every step of the way. But then just like that, it finished. And it's, it's time to go home. And so I was looking forward again to the, the flight. The, I stayed on the opposite side of the aircraft now, still on the wing, still on the window seat. So good thing I was able to uh, uh, like get my seat or uh, yeah, get my seat assigned beforehand. So I was able to place myself on the wing, on the window seat. And it was a very pleasurable, pleasurable flight. I recorded a couple of minutes of it. It was like the takeoff, the landing. At, at one point, I think I was even like recording, and then it was like I was like recording for 13 minutes, one three minutes, the entire landing procedure, starting when the when the flaps started uh, extending, and you can you can see. You can kind of feel when the autopilot went off because the flight controls went more fidgety. You know, the aileron started moving, the wings started moving more. So you can like, like um, observe or uh, say that it's actually the pilot doing the, 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 the fl flying now. Something like that. Wow, it's a bit skimpy here. There we go. There you go, okay, good. How are we in terms of distance? We are actually speeding, that's fine. 62 kilometers, okay, that's good. But yeah, all in all, it was a very good trip, very tiring. But now I'm back, and uh, just a heads up. I think, so they were discussing by the end of the week that um, one week was not enough time to do everything. So it might be, I don't think they'll make me fly to China again. But I think what will happen is the, the ones from China will be flying over to Singapore and uh, will be meeting here instead. So we might have like a round two. So if that happens, unfortunately, I don't have any pre-recorded videos anymore. So I'll let you guys know. I'll uh, update you in YouTube uh, community, post it in Facebook, Twitter, but I'll, I'll give you a heads up if that ever happens because it's not yet sure. But that means I'll have to work full time again and uh, I won't be able to record, I won't be able to stream. So we'll see if it happens, yeah. But right now, there has no been discussion about it yet. But just a heads up that it might happen. And uh, as a result, there might be no videos for a couple of days or for that week. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. I like the, the cracks on the road. You guys notice that one? It looked very real, very worn. And it was a very smooth transition between the the worn out roads and the much better conditioned roads here where we're in. Poznan, that's where we're going I think. Can we go here? Thank you. Up, 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 up. 
too bad it went rainy. Would have been a nice uh, sightseeing tour. I'm actually not sure. Bucket of Doom. That Doom. That Doom. That bucket is uh, immovable. Have you guys tried hitting that? That bucket does not budge an inch. Your truck will just fly off of it, bounce off it. So I'm not actually sure how the event goes, but from what I've read so far, you have to deliver 10 different uh, racing teams and I think the destination changes every three days. That's how I understood it. So this one is from Prague, so our next one should be a different uh, a different uh, episode, a different uh, source, yeah, a different team coming from a different country and uh, going somewhere else looking completely different as well I guess. So we'll see how that looks. But yeah, I, I figured it would be nice to start in Prague because it's probably the closest to SES's heart coming from the same place. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how the others look like. I'm not really sure if how long the event will be on. So I might need to do it already. Maybe I can pre-record some videos as well. We'll see. try to work things out yeah I heard some of the trips can be quite long actually like some of them are like 900 kilometers a thousand kilometers so that might need like two episodes for us but it would be a nice change I like having these events because they add a bit of spice to your truck you know, uh, ETS2 is a bit of a uh, sandbox right now there's not much progression that is happening oh crap AI sucks at this, especially when you have real traffic density. So more cars on the road, they are able to squeeze in less and less. So I think we'll be stuck here for a while. Because it does not seem like the traffic is uh, really toning down. There you go, after this car. Go, go. Go, bro. Oi! There you go. Good job. Good job. Can we still go? Yeah, looks like it. How about the other side? Wow, lucky. Okay, good. Alright, perfect. So, yes, the next episode we'll do more of these uh, events. We'll check out the different trailers, different destinations, and uh, we will uh, try out the Cummins N14 engine sound for this. And you, then you guys let me know which you prefer, okay? Stock or open pipe? More raw or more more uh, refined engine sound like this one? Are those guys stopped? Why are they stopped? So I need to turn right there. I think I just have to line up here and wait. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So yeah, thanks to that trip, I got inspired even more to learn about airliners. So I think that's the next step for me in Flight Sim. So I downloaded the 737-800 uh, mod from Zeebo. Zeebo? I think that's one of the most famous planes out there and I'm going to start learning it. If you guys have any tips for me, let me know. But what I've heard so far from Tadius and from uh, Ultimate is to watch a lot of videos and uh, not, no one video can cover everything. So watch a lot of videos, try to compile what they teach and then uh, try it for myself. But they say the hardest part is uh, getting to start the plane getting through the checklist because there are so many things you have to take into account but the actual flying is not that far off from the flying we've done so far so I think we should be good as if we can uh, if I can bridge the gap but yeah what I'm planning is assuming that the stream this week pulls through and that I don't get pulled into the office 
that means uh, we will probably be checking out the 737 and fumbling about with the manuals and controls and stuff. But I'll try to learn something before then so we don't start from scratch. Uh, but if you guys want, then join me. That's going to be on Wednesday, 8 a.m. Singapore time. So that's uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, unfortunately, that's, I think, 2 a.m. Europe time, Central Europe time. Or is it still 1 a.m.? Eh? I'm not sure if you guys shifted with DST already. It's either this week or next week that you shift. If I remember correctly. Here we are. Park this thing and get the first out of 10. That's the one, yes. So look forward to more videos, more ETS2 with this kind of event happening. Very nice events. So we can all enjoy, get a bit more twist. Get more a sense of purpose in the deliveries that we do. And this is why I like FS economy so much. Because it makes flying, gives flying a definite purpose. You know, saving up for something, buying your own plane. That e economy system is so good and the for the longevity of a game. For me at least. Unfortunately, I think FS economy not very big with airliners. I think it's kind of hard to find jobs that fill an airline. But we'll see. One step at a time. Okay, turn it off. Very nice truck. Excited to check more out of it in the coming episodes. So yeah, we'll be giving the Scania T a rest for now because we will be focusing on this truck and I'll try to color comb <laughs> get a better color combination. Maybe I pick a neutral color next time, huh? Maybe uh, something off-white would work. Beautiful trailer. Awesome job by SES. And it's a, a free event. So it's cool. World of Trucks contracts completed. There we go. Level 45, King of the Road. One out of ten. There we go. So next time, maybe we can go from Mannheim. Mannheim is, I guess, in Germany. Sounds like it. Team Han Racing. Going to, uh, I don't know, different places. Yeah, you can see. Delivery destinations change every three days at 7 UTC. 0700 Zulu. See team's destination schedule on okay. Yeah. So I think we basically deliver from one of these places and then they we just go wherever they tell us to go. I think that's the easiest way around it. Yeah. So look forward to more episodes and let me know if you want some changes. Next episode we'll try the open pipe commence N14. I think that's open pipe, at least it sounds like it. But you let me know if you have any other uh, recommendation, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. And if uh, if you did enjoy this episode, guys, please don't forget to hit the like button, hit the thumbs up button, comment, share with your friends, and all that stuff, right? Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Catch you in the next episode. Clumsy trucking. Let's hear that beep. Cover your ears. Oh, not too loud. No air horn. Good. <laughs> Thanks and clumsy trucking. Bye-bye.